Hello! In this tutorial I want to cover the neck and face muscles. So when you look in any anatomy textbook at muscle pictures you might see something that looks like this on the screen. Um, it seems like a daunting task because there's so many parts that are labeled. So what we'll do in this tutorial is kind of isolate the muscles, make it a little easier for you to learn. We'll talk about what the name means and something about the muscle like what its action is. All right, so I'm going to take and cover each one of these muscles. Let me review a couple of bones that are shown here because we will talk about a few of these particular bones. So don't forget that this is the frontal bone. We have the zygomatic bone. Over here is the temporal bone. We have the maxilla and we have the mandible. So those are some bones that you can see in this particular, in this particular figure. All right, well, let's go ahead and we'll start with our first muscle. Our first muscle is right here. It's called levator labii superioris. Levator means to elevate or lift upwards. Labii means lip, and superioris means that it is from above. And this particular muscle is going to raise um, the lip in an upward direction. So levator labii superioris. Our next muscle is called frontalis, and it is in the frontal region. That's where it kind of gets its name, frontalis and it's going to raise the eyebrows, frontalis. All right, our next muscle is the orbicularis oculi. It is this circular muscle that you can see around the uh, opening of the eye. And orb means circular, oculi means eye, and so orbicularis oculi is a circular muscle around the eye. It is known as a sphincter muscle, and so it closes the opening of the eye. That's what sphincter muscles do, or close a circular opening. And, uh, and so it closes the eye. That's the job of the orbicularis oculi. All right, let's next move to the zygomaticus minor. You probably see a familiar bone name in this word, zygomaticus. So zygomaticus is the zygomatic, referring to the zygomatic bone. Minor means that it's lesser or smaller than the zygomaticus greater. The job of the zygomaticus minor is to elevate the upper lip. Zygomaticus minor. Zygomaticus major is right beside it. And if you notice, it is attached to the lip and it's attached to the zygomatic bone. And so major means greater, so it's larger muscle than the zygomaticus minor. And it's used to form a smile. Zygomaticus major. All right, next we'll go to the depressor anguli oris. It's located right here. Uh, depressor means to lower. Anguli means the angle of the lip. And oris means the mouth. So it de literally depresses or pulls on the corner of the mouth to a downward direction. Depressor anguli oris. All right, so we'll go over next to the masseter. The masseter uh, literally means chewer. So masseter means chewer, and it's going to elevate or pull upwards in this particular direction, the mandible, when you chew. So it pulls or elevates the mandible, and it's called the masseter. And then lastly, in this particular picture, we have the orbicularis oris. Orb means circular, oris means um, mouth. So this is a sphincter muscle around the mouth, and it closes the lips or closes the mouth shut. All right, so those are some of the muscles you can see in this particular frontal view of the face. You should always practice with a blank diagram. So you can stop the video right now and practice with the blank diagram if you would choose to do so. All right, so we'll move on to a figure that shows a side view of the face and we'll go ahead and practice some of the muscles here. Now you can see there are some repeat muscles and there's a few new ones. So here's a new muscle, it's called the temporalis. So the tempor means temple, so it is in the temple region. It is near the temporal bone or covering the temporal bone. And its job is to elevate, if you notice in this region right here, it's going to attach to the mandible and pull the mandible in an upwards direction. So it elevates the mandible. All right, next we have the occipitalis located right there. The occipitalis uh, is going to be on the back of the head. Occipit 
means back of the head, and it's going to pull the scalp skin in an upward direction when it contracts. So it pulls the scalp skin um, backwards. I guess I should have the arrow going this way. It pulls the scalp skin backwards. It's called the occipitalis. Now the occipitalis and the frontalis, so we have the occipitalis here and the frontalis here, they're connected together by this sheet of tendon called the epicranial aponeurosis. So this is the epicranial aponeurosis. And so most of the time muscles are connected to bones, but in this particular example, we have a muscle connected to a muscle. Each muscle is connected to a bone, but muscle does connect to muscle. And the epicranial aponeurosis is a sheet of tendon that connects the frontalis to the occipitalis. All right, so we've already seen the masseter. That's a, a repeat muscle that we've already seen. And a new muscle is the platysma. Now, platy means flat, like a platypus has a, a flat beak, which is an animal in Australia. And uh, its job is to depress or take and pull down the mandible. So that's called the platysma. Um, zygomaticus minor is a repeat muscle. Zygomaticus major is a repeat muscle. They're very well seen in this particular diagram. A new muscle that we haven't covered yet is rhizorius. Rhizorius, um, the root riser means laughter. Um, it's not necessarily a muscle you use in laughter. It kind of pulls the corner of the lip laterally. So it pulls on the lip laterally in a kind of like a grimacing kind of facial feature or facial um, movement. That's called rhizorius. And then another repeat muscle is the depressor anguli oris. We've already talked about that one, uh, pulling the mouth in a downward direction. All right, so you should take and practice those muscles. You can stop the video now and practice those particular muscles and review them. All right, so if we remove some of the muscles, we can get to a little bit of a deeper muscle, the buccinator. The buccinator, pardon me, let me redo that line there. The buccinator is this muscle here, and its uh, root word buc or buck means cheek, and it's used in, uh, in different uh, kinds of mouth behaviors like whistling, blowing, and sucking. So that's called the buccinator. Okay, let's move on to some of the neck muscles. Um, these particular muscles are going to be really important in doing different things with the mandible and with the hyoid bone. So let me go ahead and review those bones with you real quickly. So up here we have the mandible, and, uh, and right here we have the hyoid bone. So these muscles are going to be attached to these particular bones, and they're going to be acting on these, uh, these bones. All right, so our first of these uh, of these particular kind of more like neck muscles would be digastric. Digastric is this muscle located right here. And you can see another little portion of it right here. It does have an anterior belly and a posterior belly. Digastric literally means two. Di means two. Gastric means bellies. So this is a muscle that has two bellies. And you can see the arrow pointing to it. It's going to elevate the hyoid, so it does kind of grab a hold of the hyoid, and elevating the hyoid means pulling the hyoid in this direction, and it depresses the mandible, pulling the mandible in this particular direction. So that's called a digastric. Digastric means two bellies. In this particular drawing over here, the, the uh, anterior belly has been cut, um, so you can see a, a, an underneath muscle a little bit better. All right, and let's talk about that muscle that's underneath. It's called the mylohyoid. So it's this muscle right here. You can see a portion of it right here as well. Um, and uh, mylohyoid, it means milhyoid, which probably doesn't mean too much to, to, to anybody. But it is going to do the job of elevating the hyoid. So if we look at what it does, it does elevate the hyoid, and it depresses the mandible. Okay, so that's called the mylohyoid. 
hyoid. Our next muscle is called the omohyoid. You can only see a little portion of it right here. So the omo omohyoid, omo means relation to the shoulder, hyoid means um, the hyoid bone. So this is a strange muscle in that it's going to go all the way over and attach to the scapula. And um, so it does attach to the hyoid bone and then it also attaches to the scapula. Its job is to depress the hyoid bone. So depression of the hyoid bone means that the hyoid bone is going to be pulled in this particular direction. Direction. Omohyoid. Okay, our next muscle is called the sternohyoid. It's located right here. Um, sterno means sternum. Hyoid refers to the hyoid bone. And it's going to, again, depress the hyoid bone. So it pulls the hyoid bone in, a, um, in an inferior direction. Okay, that's called the sternohyoid. Our last muscle in this particular picture is going to be the sternocleidomastoid. So it's a large muscle in the front of the neck. Sterno means sternum, clido means clavicle, mastoid is referring to the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Now we can't see the sternum and we can't see the clavicle, but I can see a little piece of the mastoid process right there of the temporal bone. So um, the name literally tells you all the parts that it attaches to. Sternum, clavicle, mastoid process of the, of the temporal bone. And so it turns the, it does many things, but one of the main jobs it does is turn the head from side to side. So that's called the sternocleidomastoid. Um, just a couple more pictures showing you a little bit more clearer view of the, of the omohyoid. So here we have the omohyoid. If you notice, it comes down from the hyoid, then it kind of extends down and attaches to the scapula. So again, it depresses the hyoid bone. It's called the omohyoid. And then lastly, we have the sternohyoid, just a different picture of it showing you the sternohyoid here. And it uh, connects the hyoid bone to the sternum. Okay, as uh, is our usual practice, we should stop the video and then practice each of the muscles that you've learned in this particular um, tutorial. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.